Welcome back, everyone, to the Risk Intel Podcast, powered by SRA Watchtower, where we share risk intelligence with experts from across the banking industry. I'm your host, Ed Vincent, CEO at SRA Watchtower. Welcome to the Risk Intel Podcast. I'm Ed Vincent, and joining me today is the Chief Growth Officer of SRA Watchtower, Nikki White. Nikki, thanks for being with us today. Morning, Ed. I'm glad to be here. Nikki, in addition to wearing that hat at SRA, you've had a background working in financial institutions yourself, right? Wearing risk and audit uh, hats there inside inside of uh, a bank. Um, we've been talking to Sean Ryan over the last few episodes about hidden factories. And I know that's something you're familiar with from your experience in, inside inside a financial institution. And so I'd, I'd love to get your perspective today on, on this concept of hidden factories and perhaps share, us, share with us an example of something you've experienced in this space. And then I'd like to tie it back to a, a solution or a way that we might be able to help uh, with one of the uh, one of those products uh, suites within uh, within Watchtower. Well, Ed, I have to say, I was really excited to hear that this was the, a series that we were launching, and I couldn't wait to tell you my story about socks in a box. Socks in a box. This is not a Dr. Seuss book. This is uh, real life. This is real life. This is not a Dr. Seuss book. Okay, um, and so away. when I, I was new to a role, um, it was a newly created position. It wasn't actually turnover. And when I walked into my beautiful new office overlooking the lake, um, taking my space heater with me, as everyone here knows, um, I'm cold 24 seven. And so there will always be a space heater within reach. We won't talk about the risk of that until a little bit later, but I had this great box to put my space heater on. And I'm like, that's an excellent space heater holder. Come to find out as the year progressed, that's where all of our socks controls were. So it was a white box full of manila folders, had no idea what was in it until the auditors came knocking on the door and said, do you have your SOC certifications, your, your attestation forms, and are they signed? I'm like, okay, didn't know I had to do that. Didn't know that wasn't already being taken care of. Started asking around, where can I find this? Well, they're in that box. You put your feet on them every day. <laughs> and they holds up your holds up your space heater. And so I started digging through my my box and I found all of my socks and ran around the bank as the auditors were waiting and got all the attestations, all, all the um, all the confirmation signed and turned them into the auditors. So I'll let you I'll pause for a moment and let you process that and think about all the risks that there that we might be able to talk about from a hidden factory perspective. Yeah, qu quite a few risks associated with that. Um... You know, one of the concepts of that sounding a little bit crazy um, is 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 the fact that um, if we can get past the fact that it was being done on paper and 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 everything related to to you know risk related to that, um, the fact that I think one of the things that is hidden there is the cost associated with you, as you said, running around the organization. And I imagine when you probably showed up at someone's doorstep. Uh, you 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 got a what are you here for moment right so so I, I'd love to understand a little bit more about that dynamic of of the amount of effort it took to get people to engage and participate because I think that's one of the things that's hidden in a, in a in a journey like this absolutely and so you know where I think we is a good place to start is that the person who had done this previously had done it for years and years. There wasn't a checklist, there wasn't a procedure, there wasn't a process that said, hey, it's whatever date and whatever time and whoever's gonna come asking for these things. And so it was a surprise. And had that person not been there or to even go back and find out what was in that box that my space heater was on, who knows where they would have lived? Where would we have started to look for them? And so, you know, that's that's problem number one is that no one knew where to find stuff. No, no one knew where these things lived. But then, as you said, it wasn't someone else's priority. So when I showed up and darkened their door, they were like, what are you asking me for? They do this once a year. They don't remember what it is. And so there's that re-education process, which also makes me think too, is your risk culture in a box? Is this simply something that you check the box on every, every year? I had some people who said, well, what am I signing? 
I'm like, that's a great question. You should always ask that question before you sign something. Let me go get your manila folder. Have you reviewed these controls? They, and you know, in that moment, some of them said, I'm not doing that anymore. Well, that person left and that control was not transitioned over. So these controls were essentially dead. They, they were somehow, sometimes, and somewhere incorporated into processes and procedures, but they weren't a living, breathing part of the risk culture. And that's a risk in and of itself, you know, thinking about the governance perspective of lacking those attestations and that physical awareness that this needed to happen, but then all of the control owners that lived even below the attestation level were not able to properly execute on their controls. So it was a, a risk to the control environment. So certainly a lot of a lot of you know upstream, if you will, to the regulators and the risk committee, right? Um, risks and then downstream uh, risks as well. From people being able to do their jobs effectively and 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 have that uh, have that control in place, if you will, um, the the reaction that you got when you knocked on people's doors, um, you mentioned the fact that many of them asked for you to give them some supporting material, and and then and then you uh, and then you went through what what was really being done today. Uh, how many people did you have to talk to in, in that journey? And, and you know, was that a, a five minute conversation? Was it, was it an hour? I'm trying to get to this, this next step of, of not only unearthing a, a step that might be hidden, but then really get to the cost piece, right? What, what is this costing your organization that you're not even aware of um, that if you actually looked at it, maybe there'd be a, more, a, a positive ROI in making an investment, for example, in a piece of technology to help enable this. Well, so I, I needed to talk to probably about a dozen people, you know, based on the, on the size of our organization, there were probably about 12, 12 people that I needed attestations from, but it persists further when I had people who actually asked questions and actually we had good conversations that went on for several hours because they said, hold on, I own this, but this person actually does it and I need to know more about it. And so it, some of these questions and some of these visits prompted deep discussions. Um, some of them, however, said, okay, here's your signature. Get, get out of my door. And so you know, think about that entire spectrum of that experience of trying to get those dozen signatures. You know, some were a lack of risk culture and a lack of risk awareness. And some was really digging in and finding those inefficiencies and saying, hey, we need to, we need to provide some light of day on this. We need to focus on is our control env environment appropriate and effective? And is it right sized? When you think about is there a positive ROI? We could kill a bunch of those controls because they were no longer needed, but also we found some that were missing. And with those controls, we could mitigate, mitigate losses. Yeah, so you, you, you've hit on a number of different themes there that I think really are key aspects of this hidden factory concept, right, of, of unearthing the risks, um, mitigating them, um, the costs associated with, with unearthing them, uh, and, and the fact that this could be quantified, right? So I would, you know, encourage our, um, our our viewers here to, you know, put pen to paper, right? As you said, there were a dozen people that you spoke to, a handful of them, maybe it was a 15, 20 minute conversation. Some of them, it was three hours, four hours. They then went on and spoke to someone else in their organization to figure out what was really being done. Um, and so you can act really quantify the, you know, the cost of, of, of the status quo, if you will, of, of normalizing the current behavior and just, maintaining that current behavior now you're you're able to say well right what is it costing me each year to do to do to do this and what could it cost me if i were to replace this with a with a piece of technology right where you've got a you know, an implementation fee maybe a license fee uh and then you can compare that to your cost of, of maintaining the status quo well, and, and even, you know, in addition to that, after we took the procedural element out of it, it really became a strategic discussion. And we were able to circulate and socialize that around the entire institution. We, we brought a lot in all the branch managers and talked about how, from a product perspective, there's product risk. What are the controls that we have around the, the products that we issue and the transactions that come along with those products? It really drove the conversations to help us decide, should we have this product? Should we not have this product? And you can't get that three-dimensional view in a manila folder in a box. Right. And so now you're going kind of beyond this, you know, cost ROI conversation and con connecting the risk and risk and strategy, right, which we've talked about in the past of really being two sides of the same coin. And, and that's really the role of that of that risk department. So I think you've 
you've you've connected the dots there nicely for us, Nikki. You've uh, you shared a a a humorous, although probably perhaps painful to uh, to to really think about uh, it uh, anecdote there. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for uh, turning us into in a, giving us a real life example and turning this into something that we can think about. Um, I know we've had prior episodes where we've talked about the risk and control self assessment module within Watchtower. That certainly is a tool that could be used to to enable these types of discussions on a, on a on an ongoing basis and enable those line managers to work with the folks that are enacting controls on an ongoing basis. So, right there, there certainly is technology out there today and tools that could help enable you know this ongoing interaction and dialogue and have a uh, a, a a stronger control environment. Thank you for allowing me to talk about my socks in a box today. Thanks, Nikki. Take care.